Cliff House, Top of the World, near the North Pole, Wednesday, December 21st, 1927. My dear people, there seem to get more and more of you every year. I get poorer and poorer. Still, I hope that I have managed to bring you all something you wanted, though not everything you asked for. Michael and Christopher, I haven't heard from John this year. I suppose he is growing too big and won't even hang up his stocking soon. It has been so bitter at the North Pole lately that the North Polar Bear, you know who I mean, has spent most of the time asleep and has been less use than usual this Christmas. Polar Bear adds, of course you know, and everyone, everybody does sleep most of the time here in winter, especially Father Christmas. The North Pole became colder than any cold thing ever has been, and when the North Polar Bear put his nose against it, it took the skin off. Now it is bandaged with red flannel. Why did he? I don't know, but he is always putting his nose where it oughtn't to be. Into my cupboards, for instance. That's because I am hungry. Also, it has been very dark here since winter began. We haven't seen the sun, of course, for three months, but there are no northern lights this year. You remember the awful accident last year. There will be none again until the end of 1928. The North Polar Bear has got his cousin and distant friend the Great Bear to shine extra bright for us, and this week I have hired a comet to do my packing by, but it doesn't work as well. You can see that by my picture. The North Polar Bear has not really been any more sensible this year. I have been perfectly sensible, and have learned to write with a pen in my mouth instead of a paintbrush. Yesterday he was snowballing the snowman in the garden and pushed him over the edge of the cliff so that he fell into my sleigh at the bottom and broke lots of things. One of them was himself. I used some of what was left of him to paint my white picture. We shall have to make ourselves a new gardener when we are less busy. The man in the moon paid me a visit the other day, a fortnight ago exactly. He often does this does about this time, as he gets lonely in the moon, and we make him a nice little plum pudding. He is so fond of things with plums in it with plums in. His fingers were cold as usual, and the North Polar Bear made him play snapdragons to warm them. Of course he burnt them, and then he licked them, and then he liked the brandy, and then the bear gave him lots more, and he went fast asleep on the sofa. Then I went down into the cellars to make crackers, and he rolled off the sofa, and the wicked bear pushed him underneath and forgot all about him. He can never be away a whole night from the moon, but he was this time. I have never been expected to look after the man in the moon before. I was very nice to him, and he was very comfy under the sofa. Suddenly the snowman, he wasn't broken then, rushed in out of the garden next day just after tea time and said, The moon is going out. The dragons had come out and were making an awful smoke and smother. We rolled him out and shook him and he simply whizzed back, but it was ages before he got things quite cleared up. I believe he had to let loose one of his simply terrificalist freezing magics before he could drive the dragons back into their holes, and that is why it has got so cold down here. The polar bear only laughs when I tell him it's his fault, and he curls up on my hearthrug and won't do anything but snore. My messengers told me that you have somebody from Iceland staying with you that is not so far from where I live and nearly as cold. People don't hang up stockings there, and I usually pass by in a hurry, though I sometimes pop down and leave a thing or two for their jolly Christmas trees. My usual way is down through Norway, Denmark, Germany, Switzerland, and then back through Germany, northern France, Belgium, and so into England, and on the way home I pass over the sea, and sometimes Iceland, and I can see the twinkling lights faint in the valleys under their mountains, but I go by quick as my reindeer gallop, as hard as they can there. They always say they are frightened a volcano or a geyser will go off underneath them. This must be all. I have written you a very long letter this year, as there was nothing to draw, but dark and snow and stars. Love to you all, and happiness next year. Your loving Father Christmas.